Hey, how's it going, do you solfers? Today you're gonna to learn why doing maintenance on German cars, or in this case, this Audi here, costs so much money. Yes, today I'm gonna to show you how you can put this 2000 Audi A6 with the 2.7 liter bi-turbo engine in the service position in order to change its timing belt. Now, if you've been following my channel, you already know how to remove the bumper cover to this car. And as you can see here, we had to remove this because it was badly damaged. But nonetheless, you do need to remove that bumper cover if you were to put this into the service position. So if you don't know how to do that, I suggest you watch my previous video. Now, as you can see, we also removed the left side fender because again, it was badly damaged due to an accident. But in order to put this car into the service position, you do not need to remove your fender. All you need to remove first is your front bumper cover. Now there is a chance that I may not need to do a timing belt on this car because the timing belt replacement interval for these 2.7 liters and also the 2.8 liter naturally aspirated engines on these Audis is 105,000 miles according to the manufacturer. And back when I used to work really hard and not very smart, I used to buy a lot of the Passats and Audis with these 2.8 liter engines with the snap timing belt, replace the head and then resell the cars. And interestingly enough, all the cars that I bought with a snapped or broken timing belt, the timing belt had broken at about 125,000 miles, give or take a few thousand miles. Now, interestingly enough, the mileage on our project car is exactly 127,404 miles. So the timing belt on this car was either replaced on time or it's just about to break and needs to be replaced immediately. Now, one thing that's making me think that the timing belt on this car has been replaced is that, you know, the drive belt, which you guys cannot see, but it's underneath this tube, looks in pretty good shape. And the way to replace the drive bolts on these cars, again, you have to put this in the service position. And if you're going to go through all of that, there's a high probability that you also replace the timing belt and hopefully the water pump and all the tensioners and the rollers. But again, since this is my project car and I plan to modify this car and make it a lot more faster, it's very important that I make sure that the timing belt, but more importantly, the timing belt tensioner, the rollers and the rolling tensioner have been replaced. So that's why we're gonna put this in the service position and take a close look at our timing belt and all its components. So to start off, I'm gonna remove these plastic air ducts that are in front of our air intercoolers. Like that. These are the pins on the bottom and up top that you need to clear. And the same thing on this side. All right, next up top, we're gonna to remove these two screws and then remove this air intake bracket from our lock carrier. There we go. Um, by the way, if you see any tools or products I use in this video that pique your interest, I'll put links to where you can find them down below in the description box. So don't be afraid to click on them and check them out. And next we can remove the rest of this so that it's out of our way as well. All right, so here's more encouraging signs. As you can see, the valve cover gasket on these looks in pretty good shape as well. There are no leaks. Furthermore, it looks like it has been replaced fairly recently. Am I gonna get that lucky? Did someone do a full service timing belt Buff car gaskets and everything on this. Then got into a little minor crash. Had their insurance total the car. And then I got to buy it for $588. That would be a first, but we're gonna find out, I guess. Next, we'll come back up top and we're gonna remove these two torque screws. And these are gonna require a T30 torque spit. You gotta be shitting me. Have to do this the old fashioned way, I guess. And there's another one right underneath our headlight. And the same thing on the driver's side. All right, next we'll come down here and we're gonna remove these three screws for our bumper shocks. Actually, first I'm gonna remove this plastic cover that's torn up and broken. It's only held in by this one Phillips head screw. There we go. All right, so these screws are gonna require a T47 torque socket. And these are on there, not tight at all. So that further leads me to believe someone's already been here. And next, we'll remove this 10 millimeter nut. And now this should come out. All right, same thing on this side. All right, now with those screws loose, our lock carrier is also ready to be detached from the body. Now, if I was certain I was doing a timing belt job before I remove that, I would remove the lower radiator hose and the upper hose. And these are easy to remove. You can simply uh, remove this clip to make it easier, then twist and pull, and these are come off. There's also a coolant temperature sensor that you would get to from underneath that's on the lower hose that you would need to remove. Then from there, I would probably just simply push this back and then that would give me enough space to work on everything. But if you want, you can also remove these uh, power steering lines 
that fan, this ambient temperature sensor, and then you would need to fish this sensor along the wire for this fan down through here, then come down here and there's a wiring harness down there that you want to detach it from and then fish it through this uh, lock carrier towards the engine. Then you would also need to remove this headlight. You would need to remove these two screws up top and then one screw on the bottom. The sensor also needs to be removed and fished through that hole. And then from there, if there's nothing else to be removed, you can get this lock carrier out, detach it from that end, and then simply swing at this side and giving you all sorts of access to your timing belt cover and your timing components. And this way, unlike what the factory says, you do not need to discharge your AC system and remove these AC lines. But I, hopefully, may not need to do all that, so for now, I'm simply just gonna push this lock carrier forward, remove the timing belt covers, and take a closer look. And actually, before I do that, and so that we don't overstretch this coolant hose, I'm gonna remove this coolant hose from this uh, T connection here. Then I'll plug up this end with my locking pliers. And then to plug up this end, I'm just gonna run the screw in a couple of threads so that we stop leaking coolant all over the place. All right, now we should be able to remove this. Just before you remove the last screw, have something underneath it to support it because it's gonna come loose. There we go. All right, now we get to pull this out and I'm gonna put some two by fours right in between the body and this uh, lock carrier to keep it out. Right there, that's where you wanna put it. All right, so here's a close look at our uh, serpentine belt. As you can see, it's still in pretty good shape. No sign of any uh, dry rotting or damage or excessive wear. But the tensioner itself doesn't look new, so maybe they didn't replace that, but we'll see, I guess. All right, next we'll remove this engine cover. There's only two plastic screws that are holding in. This comes off like that. All right, next we'll undo these two clamps and we're gonna remove these two inlet tubes that are coming from our intercoolers. And by the way, here's a look at our diverter valves. And these look like they've been serviced at some point. These are not factory clamps. The factory clamps look like these. These are one-time use clamps, but someone has replaced those clamps with these, which is a good sign. Whoever owned this car took good care of it. But these diverter valves themselves look like factory. Now, when we get to modding and upgrading this engine, replacing those diverter valves, is going to be important, but uh, hopefully we'll get there sometime soon. All right, so here's the two clamps up top. Next, on the intercooler side, there's a 10 millimeter bolt and another clamp that we need to loosen. There's a clamp, and we're gonna pull this out from this end. Speaking of diverter valves, we need to undo this clamp and detach this inlet tube from our diverter valve as well. There we go. And the same thing on this side. All right, next I'm actually gonna remove this fan from our uh, fan clutch assembly, and this is held in by four Allen head bolts. And these are five millimeter, if you're wondering. All righty, there we go. Now I got my wrench on the nut at the back of this clutch assembly. Just gonna tap it with this hammer and see if we can get this loose. And I don't know if I mentioned, but these turn loose going clockwise. I think, yep, got it. And here's a closer look at our fan clutch assembly. All right, next we're gonna remove our drive belt so we get a 17 millimeter socket. And we're gonna put it here with our ratchet. I'll simply turn it clockwise and take off our belt, easy as that. All right, so here's a close look at our drive belt. As you can see, this is in really good shape. There's absolutely no sign of wear or dry rot on this thing. All right, next up, we're gonna remove our tensioner. And for this, you're gonna need a 10 millimeter Allen socket to remove this one bolt. There we go. Next, we'll remove this passenger side upper timing belt cover. There's one five millimeter uh, Allen bolt here. There's also another one of these on the bottom. And here comes our upper timing belt cover on the passenger side. Keep all the bolts with the right part. That way it'll be easier to put everything back together. All right, next we're gonna take this one off. This one looks like to, that it's held in by only a couple of clamps. Yep. 
All right, next we'll take off the driver's side cover as well. This one's held in by one, two, three bolts that I can see as of right now. All right, looks like we're gonna need to remove this power steering pump pulley as well. This one's held in by three Allen bolts and these are gonna be six millimeter. All right, so here's the moment we've all been waiting for, close inspection of our timing belt. So at first glance, I see these markings on the pulley and the belt. This timing belt has obviously been replaced, I don't, but it has not been replaced at the dealership. There's a timing tool that goes in between here that makes using timing marks and stuff unnecessary. The water pump and its pulley look good, that's obviously been replaced. The belt itself also looks okay, but it does not look like it has been replaced in the last few thousand miles. All right, next I'm gonna turn the crankshaft clockwise and look for the markings on the back of this timing belt, see how badly worn they are. I don't see any markings on this belt. Okay, actually I suppose the only markings on this belt would only go here. So looking at this, and also looking at this driver's side camshaft, it looks like there's some evidence of an oil leak from around the camshaft seal to a lesser extent on the passenger side. Also this tensioner roller is not the original tensioner, as in this is not 127,000 miles old, but it doesn't look to be only 10 or 15,000 miles old either. Also upon further Googling and research, it looks like I was wrong and the uh, timing belt replacement interval has been, repla has been updated from 105,000 miles to 75,000 miles. And I guess that makes sense, you know, the newer the cars were back when I was working on these a lot, um, you know, less of a chance of the belts wearing out prematurely due to, you know, just simply being exposed to the environment, you know, the different temperatures between summer and winter and whatnot. So it made sense that, you know, you could replace them after, you know, up until 105,000 miles. But the older they get, even if they haven't reached 105,000 miles, just simply going through all the different heat cycles, you know, they wear out and you should replace them uh, before they get to 75,000 miles. So in so many words, the verdict is in. We're gonna replace the timing belt, the tensioner, the tensioning roller, and all the camshaft and crankshaft seals. Uh, I may not replace the water pump, but I'll inspect it more closely while when we open everything up. But we're gonna save the uh, timing belt replacement procedure for a separate video, because this video is getting too long, plus I gotta go buy all the different parts and get them all set and ready. But nonetheless, in this video, I guess it's pretty evident why working on Audis or maintaining Audis is so expensive. Uh, as you just saw, just to simply get to the timing belt, we have to do so much work. Now, if your alternator goes bad, it's the same amount of work. If you have to replace your drive bolt tensioner, your AC compressor, your fan clutch assembly, any of those things goes bad, you have to go through all what we just went through just to get this out, to get enough space to replace those things. But on the plus side, if you know how to work on them yourself, they're excellent cars, they're really fun to drive, very comfortable handling, and an overall a great experience uh, when you're driving one of these around. Also, a couple of you mentioned that I look very tired in my videos. I think you'll be interested to know whose fault it is. Be with some butt hit. Come on, come here, show your face. It's all Beavis' fault. She does not sleep, doesn't let me sleep, plus she pees and poops all over the place. And Butthead just beats up on her. And she fing barks. And she chews on stuff. She breaks stuff. She breaks into things. She jumps over things. She knocks down things. She drools all over the place. And if she keeps this up, pretty soon she's gonna get tied to a pole on the corner. All right, that's it. So up until the next video, I suggest you watch these videos, of which I'll put links to on this side of the screen. There will also be links down below in the description box as well. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.